This paper was originally part of a panel entitled The Emergence of the Knowledge Popularizer between the Fairground and the Lecture Hall, 1820s to 1890s. If at all, the French scholar Gustave Le Bon is known today mainly for his La Psychologie des Foules, which was published in 1895 and became a major reference for all those who such as, for instance, Sigmund Freud, wanted to study that new social phenomenon of the crowd in modern societies. By that time, Le Bon had already acquired a position in the French intellectual landscape, mainly thanks to the almost incessant stream of publications that he produced, but also because he had become something of a public figure. Here is a list of Le Bon's principal publications by 1910. So it's not an exhaustive list of his books. And as one can see, he has published by then on a very wide range of topics, including several books on his travels, his studies on psychology, but also experimental research on, for instance, tobacco smoke or asphyxia, and also on training horses. What is interesting in the context of this lecture is that in several of his travel books it is mentioned that they were illustrated but with photos by, taken by the author himself. So Le Bon was indeed an early adept of photography. So Le Bon was a very prolific author but despite or maybe simply because of the vast extent of his interests, he did not choose the path of an academic career. In 1909, he was characterized by Edmond Picard, then professor at Brussels University, in a study on the life and work of uh, Gustave Le Bon as follows. I quote, He's a scholar in the margins, a scientific irregular, but how ingenious, how capable, how penetrative, how original. So maybe because of this marginal position, Le Bon was very active in knowledge dissemination and knowledge popularization. And that happened already very early in his career, when in 1872, he gave at least two lectures at the Salle du Progrès, that was created by Abbé Moigneau in Paris on anatomy and histology and also on the microscopic world. Lectures that were illustrated with optical lantern slides. Abbé Moigneau was undoubtedly one of the pioneers of popular science communication in the 19th century in France. In 1852, he had founded an illustrated journal entitled Cosmos, and two decades later, in the 1870s, he championed the lantern as a teaching tool because he was convinced that verbal demonstrations alone were un insufficient to transmit knowledge to the general audience that he wanted to attract for the lectures that he organized. As he wrote in a manual that he published on the use of the lantern as a teaching tool, the lantern allowed the entire auditorium to witness, I quote, the most varied scenes of nature and the most interesting scientific phenomena with an incomparable fidelity. And Monio also noted that this was made possible in particular thanks to, I quote, the alliance with photography, which opens up an illimited field of applications. In 1873, thus shortly after his lectures, Le Bon published a booklet of about 40 pages in a series edited by Abbé Monniot, in which he gave a brief description of his lectures. This publication, entitled L'anatomie et l'histologie, enseigné par les projections lumineuses, 
states that Le Bon had lectured to audiences of 300 people. The projected images had a size of 4 meter by 5 meter and were perfectly in focus. Le Bon writes, I quote, the lectures I gave from 15 November 1872 onward appear to have vividly struck the professors and members of the medical profession who honored me with their presence. In the lectures dealing with human anatomy, I was able to show even very small organs, such as the eye, for instance, to a large auditorium. In those dealing with the microscopic structure of tissues, I presented cross-sections of organs, such as the kidney, of bones, etc., enlarged up to 10,000 times their diameter without any distortions in the picture. End of quote. Le Bon also claimed, I quote, the priority for teaching anatomy in this fashion. Apart from some idealistic considerations concerning the benefits of public knowledge dissemination, the booklet that Le Bon published fulfilled at the same time the function of a sales catalog. As indicated by its subtitle, it contained a descriptive catalog of the images that have served to illustrate the public lectures on anatomy and histology given by Dr. Gustave Le Bon and the equipment used to make and project them. So those interested could purchase a set of 95 slides on general anatomy and another one of 44 microscopic slides, both of which were said to have been employed during the lectures. Also, Le Bon advertised various projection apparatuses, a so-called lamposcope, that is a simple lantern for small audiences, as well as bigger projectors with prices ranging from 150 francs to 400 francs, depending on their lighting system. As Le Bon explains in this booklet, the affordances of the photographic image as an accurate record of the real, in combination with the possibility to project and thereby enlarge this image, made the lantern particularly apt to address the specific challenges of teaching anatomy and histology. Both require the visual presentation of the objects that are discussed by the teacher. But plates or specimens can be shown only to a small group of people at a time, and, as Le Bon explains, it was almost impossible to have everyone in the audience look into a microscope to study a tissue sample. Le Bon thus declared, I quote, struck by these inconveniences, I have sought to obtain by means of photography or otherwise reproductions on glass of anatomic and microscopic objects that were sufficiently detailed to be projected with the help of appropriate optical apparatuses in such dimensions that they could be seen from the remotest corners of even the largest auditorium." End of quote. So projecting reproductions of anatomic or microscopic objects allowed to overcome the problems that teachers lecturing in these disciplines had had so far. Interestingly, Le Bon had something like a cross-media strategy in order to market his material for teaching physiology, anatomy and histology. Slightly earlier than the booklet with a list of slides that were for sale, Le Bon had published a Traité de Physiologie in a 12-part series with the publisher Rothschild. Now, footnote in the slides catalogue specified that the letters appearing in the figures depicted on the slides were explained in this traité. Le Bon emphasized that thanks to the quality of the reproduction, the letters were still perfectly readable to an audience of 300 people, even when the projected image was five meters tall. So this footnote suggests that someone using the slide would need to consult the traité de physiologie to be able to explain all the details in the picture. So here is one example. The second slide in the catalogue is entitled 
division de l'abdomen en région, vu le face de la portion de l'appareil digestif contenu dans l'abdomen. So, abdomen divided into different regions, frontal view of the parts of the digestive system contained in the abdomen. And this suggests two figures on one slide in an arrangement which appears to correspond to figures 12 and 13 in the Traité de Physiologie that are indeed printed side by side. And figure 12, abdomen, shows indeed the subdivisions of this part of the upper body, while figure 13 is called precisely vue de face de la portion de l'appareil digestif contenu dans l'abdomen. Similarly, slide 10 and figure 32 in the book are both entitled Glande de l'estomac grossi 300 fois, glands of the stomach 300 times enlarged. After his 1872 lectures at the Salle du Progrès and the subsequent publication of his books on the subject, the interests of Le Bon seem to have shifted more into the direction of history, anthropology and geography. He travelled widely and wrote several books on these topics. In the early 1880s, he again appears as a lecturer using the optical lantern. Uh, in 1881, he lectured at the Société de Géographie on the Fuegians, uh, people from the south of South America that had been abducted and exhibited in the Jardin d'Acclimatation in Paris. And then in 1884, he lectured again at the Société de Géographie, now on the uh, Arabian civilizations, based on his trip into the region and his book into the region, and quite probably the photographs that he had taken. Quite probably there are other instances of Le Bon lecturing with the magic lantern, but these have to still be discovered in contemporary sources. Thank you for your attention.